I'll, I'll say this as briefly as I can. Sure. Uh, I might have to repeat it because some people listening might go, he just said what? <laughs> um, <laughs> what did uh, he just say? <laughs> what, <laughs> what I'm saying in the book, uh, and I back it up with, with, with evidence. I mean, this book is nearly 700 pages long and 355,000 words. It's not, you know, uh, you know wham, bang, and uh, goodbye. Um, but I'm saying the moon is not what it seems to be. I'm saying that um, there is a non-human race, not on the moon, although there are artifacts on the moon that are clearly not natural, but in the moon. Um, and that the moon is a, um, a vehicle and it's a modus operandi. There are others like it, um, which targets planets. And that this has unfolded during this dark, suppressed epoch. Um, and this is coming to an end and, and things are going to change. Um, and, and basically what I'm saying is, first of all, the moon shouldn't be there. I mean, even people like NASA scientists have said uh, and other scientists have said, the only thing you can say about the moon, it must be observational error because it shouldn't be there. Hmm. You know, if, if the, Earth's, uh, the, the Earth's magnetic field, uh, 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 gravitational field attracted a satellite and it far from certain with the Earth's gravitational field that it would, it should be tiny uh, as one um, scientists suggested maybe 30 miles around. This moon is 2,160 miles in diameter. It's colossal. Not only that, um, uh, there's, a, there's an excellent book um, called uh, Who Built the Moon by two researchers who hmm. look at the extraordinary uh, anomalies in relation to the moon. I mean, there's nothing um, to do with the moon virtually that makes any sense uh, of it being a heavenly body. Anyway, I, I put all this together in the book and then I... Um, I, you know, my, I've concluded, as indeed two Russian scientists did from the Soviet Academy of Sciences in the 1970s, that actually uh, the moon has been hollowed out. It's a hollowed out planetoid. You know, it's bigger than Pluto. Our moon is bigger than Pluto. I mean, it's ridiculous. Look at the size of the Earth. In fact, some scientists don't even talk about an Earth satellite relationship. They talk about a dual planet relationship. Well, if, if you're going to call Pluto a planet, I guess you must do that. Uh, and um, I called uh, my great friend in. Um, South Africa, the Zulu shaman um, and the official historian of the Zulu nation called Kreda Mutwa. And I didn't tell him what I was putting together and what, where the information and evidence was taking me. Mm -hmm. I just said to him, and, and I found, Patrick, Zulu legends. I mean, the legends from all over the world have uh, great validity and great common themes. But I found the Zulu legends to be stunning in their um, uh, accuracy. I mean, the Zulus, uh, Zu the word Zulu actually means people from the stars. They, that, mm -hmm. they, they say we came from the stars. We were seeded from the stars. And also, um, uh, their words for time and space are virtually the same because they say that time and space are basically expressions of each other. And, and these, this, I mean, it is uh, an amazing uh, culture um, when you when you take these um, these uh, legends uh, over a long period of time. Anyway, I said to uh, Credo, um, nothing more than look. Can you tell me any Zulu legends about the moon? He suggests. He said, we say the moon is an egg. <laughs> And what you get is um, with the, you know, the anthropologists and the mainstream historians and, 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 and what have you, is that they, they off, so often uh, so misunderstand what ancient uh, legends and accounts are saying that they take them literally. So you must be a primitive person because you think the moon's an egg. Why do they say it's an egg? Because Zulu legends say that it's hollowed out. And that it was um, uh, done by uh, uh, two brothers called um, uh, Wawani and Umpanku, who, who were reptilian in nature and, quote, uh, in the legend, had scaly skin like a fish. And, um, and, and was rolled across the, the heavens to the earth um, hundreds of generations ago. And when it arrived, it caused great catastrophe, as it would. Um, uh, and, and I explain some of that uh, in a second. Um, and, and, of course, with uh, this Zulu legend of Wawani and Mpanku, the two brothers, um, you then go to Suma and you, you look at the Sumerian tablets where they talk about the two brothers that, that, that were leaders of a non-human race called the Anunnaki. That was Enki mm -hmm. and Enlil. Mm -hmm. They call the, um, the two brothers in Zulu uh, legend the Water Brothers. And the water is also associated with particularly Enki and the... Uh, in the in the legends of uh, and accounts, not just legends, the, the written accounts of um, of the uh, Sumerian uh, period in what we now call Iraq, and and 
so when you then look at the scientific evidence, because I find it so compelling when you take these ancient legends and then you apply them to what, what, what's been discovered from a scientific point of view, um, there is so much evidence that the, the, the moon is actually hollow. That is amazing. Is, That's amazing. Yeah. Whenever um, uh, the moon has been hit by something colossal, a massive um, whack, um, since they've had um, sensitive te technology on the moon to measure it, scientists have been shocked by the fact that the moon um, uh, just vibrates vibrates on one occasion for half an hour. The moon vibrated. And then on another occasion with a bigger whack, it was like a couple of hours or so. It just vibrated. And um, so they, they, as one scientist said to the, um, one of the authors of Who Built the Moon, uh, when, when, when one uh, collision happened, it, it was almost as if the moon um, had hyd hydraulic struts inside the way it actually vibrated from the, from the hit. Anyway, I, I put all this stuff in great detail um, in, um, in, in the book. And, and also, of course, the position of the moon is, I mean, when you see the mathematics, the correlation of position of size between the Earth, the moon and, and, and the sun, it's unbelievable. I mean, we, for instance, have the moon in such a perfect position in relation to the sun. Um, I think it works out as it's 400 times smaller than the sun and 400 times nearer the earth than the sun. And, and that means that um, when we have a, so, a solar eclipse, the moon is virtually exactly the same size as the sun. That's where we have it. Anyway, um, how, how does the moon then affect the, the tides and those kinds of things if it's actually a, a structure that's been made by, by someone? Well, I, 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 my feeling is it's been... Um, not made from scratch. It has been changed. It has been uh, turned in oh. to something. Mm. Um, uh, but it was a, a, like a planetoid to start with. That's, what the, um, that's why the Zulu legends talk about the fact the moon is an egg because it was hollowed out. Mm -hmm. um, and these Russian scientists in the 70s said they, they believed it was a, um, a planetoid that had been hollowed out. by. And this is another point. If we try to understand what is possible by what humans can do, then we're going to lose the plot because the human, human potential for technological know-how is nothing like the cutting edge of, of this universe. And, and so if we, if we um, filter everything through, could we do it, then we're going to say, we know it can't be done, but it can be done by uh, uh, groups of entities, whatever you want to call them, that, that are thousands and thousands of years ahead of us technologically. Um, anyway, um, the other thing, uh, Patrick, about the effect is uh, on the Earth, uh, just by the moon being where it is and the size it is, um, is not just that it, it affects the tides, so it fundamentally affects that. It affects the speed the Earth spins. That's why um, it affects fundamentally our sense of time. We get month from month. Um, we get the menstrual cycle from month, hmm. moon, mm -hmm. menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, of course, fundamentally affected by that. It, it, just by being there, nothing else, it has a fundamental effect on human um, hormonal uh, activity. And therefore, the endocrine system, which locks into the chakra system, which locks us into out there. And of course, part of the chakra, the, uh, um, quote, uh, uh, or stroke uh, endocrine system is... The, the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, which is what we call um, the third eye, which gives us sixth sense out there uh, connection. So if you, if you um, have the power to shut that down, uh, again, like I say, if we, if we keep talking for long enough, or it, it all connects, then you shut down people in, in the five sense uh, level of reality. Uh, and, and I'm going further than this. <laughs> Let's say he's going further. Yeah, I'm going further than this in the book. I'm saying that actually there is a, um, a signal, a frequency being broadcast from the moon, which is fundamentally affecting our reality. It's, giving, it's given us a, um, a uh, collective hive mind, which collects, uh, connects into the hive mind of these um, entities. And uh, uh, years ago, back in the 90s, I came across... Um, uh, it was kind of a B movie I in America, but it was it was so so accurate uh, in theme of what's happening in the world. It was called They Live. Uh, it was directed, produced by a guy called John Carpenter, who worked with George sure. Lucas on mm -hmm. the, the Star Wars films and stuff like that. And since I've understood the, what I put together with relation to the moon, I now realise that actually 
um, they live was even more accurate than I thought it was because for anyone who hasn't come across it and they can go on YouTube, put John Carpenter there.